and we are prepared to take strike action to make Stellantis keep the promise. And now, almost a month to the day after that rally, nearly 200 workers from that Sterling Heights plant were laid off. The United Auto Workers president, Sean Fain, just humiliated Carlos Tavares and sent him into a meltdown. Fain's remarks weren't just casual banter, they were a direct hit aimed at Tavares' leadership and the choices he has made under his watch. Could this be a sign of a growing divide between labor and management, or are we witnessing a monumental change in how workers are standing up for their rights? What really went down? Breaking the chains. The lead up to Sean Fain's bold criticisms of Carlos Tavares was anything but calm. The United Auto Workers had been duly vocal about their dissatisfaction, expressing outrage over Stellantis' relentless cost-cutting measures, think plant closures and heartbreaking layoffs. These decisions didn't just nip at workers' job security, they practically gutted morale, setting off a wave of frustration that was palpable. To make matters worse, this backdrop unfolded against a struggling automotive market, already rocked by rising inflation and shifting tides as consumers' preferences. Fain's remarks came hot on the heels of a series of contentious negotiations with major automakers, including Stellantis itself. In August 2024, he didn't just tiptoe around the issues, he jumped right in with both feet. With a statement that resonated widely, Fain boldly declared, something is rotten at Stellantis. This statement went beyond mere words. It captured the stark disconnect between dwindling sales and the ever-rising compensation of executives. But hang on, there's even more he said that really puts the CEO on blast. Let's break that down and subscribe to our channel. Fane's Accusations Fain didn't hold back, claiming that Tavares was engaging in outright price gouging, manipulating costs to boost profits, and that tactic had spectacularly backfired. The numbers spoke volumes. Despite fewer cars leaving the lot, Stellantis had somehow managed to increase profits. Fain connected the dots, attributing this anomaly to exploitative pricing strategies that left consumers scratching their heads. He didn't mince words. For years, Stellantis has sold fewer cars, but made more in profits. It was a statement laden with implications, implying this approach was not just unsustainable, but also a threat to consumers and the company's long-term health. But the accusations didn't stop there. Fain turned the spotlight on Tavares for failing to follow through on commitments made during earlier labor negotiations. He specifically called out the shocking halt of plans to reopen the Belvedere assembly plant in Illinois, a move perceived as a deep betrayal of trust. Workers felt this on a personal level, their frustrations understandably bubbling over as layoffs and plant closures became the grim reality. Fain's rhetoric wasn't just aimed at Tavares, it underscored a broader, festering frustration with the toxic corporate culture at Stellantis. He wrapped up his remarks with a resounding call to action, demanding an end to what he labeled corporate greed. His message was crystal clear, invest in the workforce or risk letting executive bonuses take precedence over the very people making the company run. The ripples of Fain's accusations were immense. They not only highlighted underlying tensions, but also set the groundwork for possible possible escalations in labor disputes. Workers feeling inspired and supported by their union leadership rallied together, united in their response to the perceived injustices permeating the company. The stakes were high, and the quiet discontent had transformed into a clarion call for change. This was more than just a moment, it was the beginning of a challenging journey ahead. Corporate Turmoil Sean Fain's pointed criticisms hit Stellantis right where it hurts, creating serious risks for the company's reputation and edging closer to undermining consumer trust. Think about it, when a leader speaks out so publicly, it doesn't just fade into the background, it casts a long shadow over the reputation of the company. This rebuke has amplified scrutiny towards Stellantis' leadership and exposed the cracks in its operational practices. As labor rights issues continue to gain traction in the media, Stellantis finds itself under an increasing amount of pressure to genuinely address worker concerns. If they don't step up, we could see heightened tensions in negotiations that might very well lead to strikes. It's a precarious situation. The glaring gulf between Tavares' skyrocketing compensation and the everyday struggles of workers has created a narrative dangerous for consumer perceptions, particularly as people become more sensitive to corporate ethics and labor practices. The fallout from Fain's statements was not something that could be ignored. Analysts were already speculating about the long 
long-term implications for Stellantis, who were trying to navigate a stormy market environment marked by declining sales and profitability. When you add Fane's allegations of price gouging into the mix, things get even more complicated. It raises alarms about potential consumer dissatisfaction translating to plummeting sales figures. And let's not forget the ongoing layoffs and plant closures, which are like salt on the wound, affecting employee morale and raising tough questions about Stellantis's commitment to its workforce. The media response to this explosive confrontation was nothing short of a wildfire, swift, intense, and reflecting broader societal concerns about corporate accountability and labor rights. Public sentiment has clearly shifted towards favoring labor unions. More consumers are voicing their support for workers who are advocating for their rights. You could see this change playing out across various media platforms, showcasing that labor issues are increasingly taking center stage. Social media has played a pivotal role in amplifying Fane's powerful message message, letting it echo across the digital landscape and galvanizing support for the United Auto Workers cause in a way that's never been possible before. As news outlets heavily covered the escalating tensions between the United Auto Workers and Stellantis, they also delved into the historical context of labor relations within the automotive industry. Fane's criticisms didn't just come out of nowhere, they reflected a growing frustration among workers that has been simmering for years. With the potential for strikes looming large, discussions now signal a readiness among workers to take collective action if their grievances are met with indifference. It's a high stakes moment filled with uncertainty. But one thing is clear, the fight for workers' rights is heating up, and everyone is watching. With the media whirlwind swirling around Sean Fain's striking allegations against Stellantis, one thing's for sure, Carlos Tavares' leadership is facing some serious heat. So let's dive right into the nitty gritty of his leadership style and what it really means for the company. The Darwinian CEO Carlos Tavares has emerged as a lightning rod for controversy in the automotive industry since he took the wheel as CEO of Stellantis following its formation in 2021. His tenure at Stellantis has been characterized by ambitious restructuring efforts designed to streamline operations and boost profitability to unimagined heights. Tavares has been vocal about the notion that the automotive industry finds itself in a Darwinian period, where only the most adaptable companies can not just survive but thrive amidst fierce competition and blazing technological advancements. This viewpoint has pushed him to make decisions that prioritize financial results, often putting employee job security and morale on the cutting block in the process. Tavares' philosophy embodies the belief that adaptability is the name of the game in today's relentless environment. It's this mentality that has driven him to implement drastic measures within Stellantis, like plant closures and aggressive restructuring to streamline operations. He hasn't hesitated to shut down underperforming plants or trim down workforce numbers, all in a bid to align the organization with shifting market demands. While such drastic actions are aimed at positioning Stellantis for long-term success, they have drawn sharp criticism from labor advocates who point out that such measures chip away at worker stability and morale. It's a high-stakes game with human lives and livelihoods at stake. Critics have been quick to highlight that Tavares' single-minded focus on efficiency often clutches the human element, overlooking the devastating toll these decisions can take on employees. United Auto Workers President Sean Fain has openly condemned Tavares' approach, labeling it as deeply detrimental to workers already drowning under economic struggles. The survival of the fittest mentality may resonate with shareholders eager for returns on investment, but it raises profound ethical questions around corporate responsibility toward their employees. Are profits worth the sacrifice of the very workforce that drives the company forward? As Tavares continues to steer Stellantis through treacherous waters, one thing is becoming crystal clear. The balance between profitability and ethical responsibility is trembling on a precipice. The challenge lies not just in navigating market forces, but in confronting the fundamental truths about the human costs involved in the quest for corporate survival. Justifications When it comes to Carlos Tavares and his cost-cutting strategies, there are some strong voices in his corner. Proponents argue that these measures are absolutely essential for maintaining profitability in a global market that's not just competitive but cutthroat, especially with new electric vehicle manufacturers emerging left and right. Without these bold actions, they contend, Stellantis could quickly find itself lagging behind its rivals. The automotive industry is in a state of flux, with consumer preferences rapidly shifting toward more sustainable transportation options. It's a trend train, and if Stellantis isn't on board, they risk being left in the dust. 
Tavares himself stands firm in defending his decisions, highlighting the stark need for financial sustainability in the face of ever-fluctuating market conditions. In a recent wave of statements, the CEO emphasized that adapting to market realities is non-negotiable. He put it rather strikingly, during this Darwinian period for the automotive industry, our duty and ethical responsibility is to adapt and prepare ourselves for the future. That's more than just corporate jargon, it's a call to arms. He argues that these cost-cutting measures aren't merely reactive, responding to the chaos around them. Instead, they are proactive steps designed to ensure that Stellantis remains competitive in an evolving landscape filled with uncertainty and innovation. However, here's where things get murky. As profits have dwindled, particularly in the North American market, critics have begun to raise serious doubts. They question whether these aggressive strategies are genuinely effective or if they simply serve as a facade, masking deeper issues lurking within the company's operational framework. Are these decisions truly paving the way for a brighter future, or are they merely postponing inevitable problems while sacrificing worker morale and security? As Tavares approaches his retirement in 2026, all eyes are on him, scrutinizing his leadership methods. Observers are keenly interested in how his legacy will be evaluated, particularly in light of Stellantis' performance during his tenure. Will history remember him as the man who bravely steered the company through turbulent waters, or as the CEO whose strategies left a trail of discontent and instability in their wake? It's a high-stakes question that hangs in the air. Meanwhile, the company is navigating a tumultuous automotive landscape marked by technological disruption and rapidly shifting consumer demands. The impact of Tavares' Darwinian approach is already being felt, and it's clear that the repercussions will continue to resonate throughout the industry. The challenge isn't just about cuts in numbers, it's about defining what the future of automotive leadership will look like. Stellantis' Strategies Stellantis has adopted a strategy of shutting down plants that has sent shockwaves through the workforce and the communities that revolve around these facilities. The consequences are staggering. Staggering. These closures have led to substantial job losses, casting a dark cloud of economic instability over regions that are heavily dependent on automotive manufacturing. Take for example the closure of the Belvedere Assembly Plant in Illinois. This wasn't just any plant shutdown, it wiped out thousands of jobs, and in doing so, unraveled the financial stability of a local economy that thrived on the income generated by those positions. The fallout from such closures reaches far and wide, extending beyond the immediate wave of unemployment. Local businesses that once catered to the spending power of these employees experience a sharp decline in revenue. Housing markets often suffer as families are forced to relocate, and community services that rely on local tax revenue find themselves stretched thin or struggling to survive. As if that weren't enough, tensions have intensified between Stellantis and labor unions, particularly the United Auto Workers. These unions argue passionately that such draconian decisions reflect blatant disregard for the lives, livelihoods, and future of workers and their families. The impact of these plant closures doesn't exist in a vacuum. The ongoing trend of downsizing in the automotive industry, as companies scramble to streamline operations in response to shifting market dynamics, only adds fuel to the fire. Stellantis is not alone in this emphasis on cost-cutting measures. However, the United Auto Workers has significantly ramped up its advocacy efforts, demanding greater accountability from corporate leadership regarding the treatment and welfare of the workforce. A double-edged sword. As we peer into the operational strategies employed by Stellantis, we witness a significant integration of artificial intelligence and robotics that signals a sweeping transition toward automation and manufacturing. There's no denying the potential for these advancements to boost efficiency. However, they also invite pressing concerns about worker displacement and the precarious future of jobs within the industry. Stellantis has rolled out several artificial intelligence-driven technologies aimed at optimizing production processes. For instance, the use of autonomous Autonomous mobile robots facilitates material handling without demanding significant changes to existing infrastructure. These artificial intelligence guided systems have already enabled Stellantis to enhance productivity while slashing operational costs. Yet this shift towards automation raises pivotal questions about the long-term viability of traditional manufacturing jobs. What happens when machines begin taking over tasks that humans once performed? This reality brings workers face-to-face -face with uncertainty regarding their roles and 
and job security within an increasingly automated factory floor. On one hand, advocates of automation argue that it may lead to safer working conditions and improved efficiency, presenting a more streamlined and technologically advanced industry. But let's not gloss over the criticisms. Detractors assert that such shifts could amplify existing inequalities within the workforce, leaving vulnerable employees at the mercy of relentless technological advancement. The real challenge for Stellantis lies in striking a delicate balance. The company must navigate the choppy waters of technological progress while remaining steadfastly committed to preserving meaningful employment opportunities for its workers. Brand Divestitures Tavares's bold decision to divest certain brands has ignited a firestorm of debate about its long-term viability within the automotive landscape. On the surface, shedding underperforming brands might seem like a quick fix that boosts financial performance in the short term. After all, who doesn't love a hearty balance sheet? But there's a catch. This approach risks alienating loyal customers who have invested not just dollars, but emotions in these brands. It's about love and loyalty, not just economics. When you start phasing out well-known names names like Dodge and Chrysler from specific markets. You're not just trimming the fat, you're cutting into the heritage and identity that come bundled with those names. It raises a crucial question, at what cost does financial efficiency come? This strategic shift sends ripples throughout Stellantis' overall brand strategy. It makes us wonder if the company can maintain a diverse portfolio that resonates with a wide array of consumers. As competition in the automotive sector heats up, especially with the fierce rise of electric vehicles, Stellantis faces the daunting task of navigating its brand positioning with surgical precision. One misstep and they risk losing market share to competitors who are not only surviving but thriving while cultivating rock solid brand loyalty amongst their customers. As Stellantis continues to implement its controversial strategies, the stakes couldn't be higher. The decisions made today will have room shaking consequences tomorrow. Will they find a way to evolve while also supporting their workforce or will they prioritize prioritize efficiency to the detriment of their employees. It's a balancing act that will define the future of the company and the livelihoods of the people it employs. The Electric Vehicle Transition the landscape is packed with both established automakers and nimble newcomers sprinting into the electric vehicle market, and the pressure is on. This is not just a phase, it's a full-on transformation that needs strategic planning and foresight. Workers cannot be left behind during this pivotal shift. Stellantis has set some audacious targets, aiming for 100% of its passenger car sales in Europe to be electric by 2030 and rolling out a lot more electric vehicle offerings in North America. Ambitious, right? But let's not kid ourselves. This transition is fraught with risks. It's not just about shiny new cars, it's about existing jobs and the vital training and development those workers will need. As traditional manufacturing processes give way to the high-tech methods inherent in electric vehicle production, there's a pressing need for comprehensive retraining programs. Workers must be equipped with the skills necessary to adapt and flourish in this new automotive epoch. Skipping this step would be like jumping into a pool without checking if there's water first. Moreover, Stellantis has to confront concerns looming over potential job losses linked to automation in the electric vehicle manufacturing processes. As the vehicles get smarter, the workforce can't get left behind. Balancing innovation with the stability of the workforce is a tightrope walk that the company has to master. The looming question remains, can can they execute a successful electric vehicle strategy while ensuring that their workforce is well prepared for the future of automotive manufacturing? The success of Stellantis' electrification journey hinges on their capacity to integrate cutting-edge technological advancements while simultaneously fostering an environment where employees feel valued and secure. Innovation without a human touch could spell disaster, a truth that every player in the industry must grapple with. The road ahead is paved with challenges, but it also offers an opportunity for growth, transformation, and ultimately success. How Stellantis navigates this complex landscape could define not just their future, but the future of the entire automotive industry beyond the United Auto Workers. Sean Fain's leadership isn't just making waves within the United Auto Workers, it's setting off ripples across various industries as workers everywhere awaken to the need for better treatment from their employers. The tide is turning, and Fain's emphasis on solidarity and the power of collective action might just become the gold standard for labor activism nationwide. His tenure has not only revitalized the United Auto Workers, but is also shining a spot spotlight on the immense potential that unions hold as they fight for workers' rights in today's constantly shifting economic landscape.
as Fain continues to advocate tirelessly for reforms and greater corporate accountability, his strategies could very well serve as a blueprint for other labor organizations striving for similar goals. The way he galvanized support during the historic 2023 strike against the big three automakers has propelled him into the spotlight, establishing him as a key player in the broader labor movement. Those calls for unity, urging workers to stand together, combined with the push for collaboration among different unions, may spark a resurgence of labor power in sectors where union representation has been dwindling. Imagine a scenario where various unions align their contract expirations. It's a game changer. Fain is laying the groundwork for what could be nothing short of one of the largest coordinated labor actions in American history. As the winds of change blow through workplaces, the current climate may just be ripe for significant legislative shifts. There's buzz in the air, an earnest desire for new laws aimed at enhancing worker protections and holding corporations accountable for their practices. Advocates are shouting from the rooftops that stronger regulations are essential if we want to guarantee fair wages and safe working conditions across every nook and cranny of our economy. The momentum generated by Fain and the recent successes seen through United Auto Workers' actions could very well influence lawmakers to consider reform initiatives that genuinely bolster workers' rights. The public is tuning in, pushing for real change, and it's fueling conversations around how to tackle critical issues like wage disparities, job security, and workplace safety. We're at a tipping point. The Biden administration has signaled its unwavering support. President Biden has publicly rallied behind striking workers reinforcing the narrative that fair compensation isn't just a nice to have, it's a must have. This political climate is fertile ground for implementing policies designed to hold corporations accountable for their treatment of employees. Enhanced protections for workers may not just be a distant hope, they could be on the horizon, prompting conversations that take root and flourish across the country. The future of labor relations is evolving, and it's impossible to overlook the significance of Fain's impact and the broader movement he's helping to ignite. A revolution in progress. In today's world, globalization, automation, and technological advancements are remaking the manufacturing landscape at a dizzying pace. It's like watching a high-stakes game where the rules are constantly shifting. As these forces continue to evolve, they'll have a profound impact on labor relations within the auto industry, demanding that both employers and unions stay on their toes, ready to adapt. The rise of electric vehicles and the increased reliance on automation present a double-edged sword, creating both challenges and exciting opportunities for workers everywhere. Let's focus for a moment on Stellantis and its competitors as they make a significant pivot toward electric vehicle production. This shift prompts an urgent question. How will these monumental changes affect employment levels and the types of jobs that will be available in the industry? It's not just a matter of making more electric cars. It's about rethinking the entire workforce structure. Workers may find themselves needing training and retraining to navigate this new technological landscape that prioritizes different skills and expertise. This highlights the critical role of unions in the conversation. They've got to lead the charge in negotiating terms that not only protect jobs, but also promote innovation. Getting left behind in this evolution is not an option. But that's not the only pressure cooker in the kitchen. Globalization is ramping up competition with international manufacturers, driving US companies to adopt increasingly aggressive cost-cutting measures. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there. While companies aggressively pursue profits, workers are fiercely advocating for fair wages and job security. This tug of war can lead to heightened tensions in labor relations as both sides grapple with the hard realities of a competitive global market. Unions, particularly the United Auto workers now face the daunting task of navigating this complex web of interests. They must carefully balance the demands for improved working conditions with the practicalities driven by competition. This is no small feat. They need to strike a balance between pushing for better conditions and understanding that companies are likely to make tough decisions to stay afloat. It's a high wire act that requires skill, strategy, and a clear vision for the future. As we look ahead, the stakes have never been higher. The transformation of the manufacturing landscape isn't just a trend, it's a revolution that necessitates constant adaptation and collaboration among workers, unions, and employers. The question is not just how companies will survive this shift, but how they can thrive by supporting their workforce in the face of change. Will unions step up to protect workers' rights and embrace the future? Can companies lead the way toward innovation without leaving their most crucial assets? 
that the people behind the answers to these questions will shape the future of labor relations in the auto industry and beyond. The journey ahead is filled with twists and turns, and it's a story that promises to keep us all on the edge of our seats. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.